Hey everyone, Terry here, and you're watching Choose Me. Previously, our participants presented their first mini case study to Mingyao, and this definitely helped them gain a better understanding into the companies they are invested in. Today, our participants will not only be presenting to Mingyao, but to one another as well. Get ready, because it's going to be one jam-packed session. Our participants have joined the call and are slowly warming up to one another. Everything seems to be smooth so far. Okay, maybe not everything. Mingya, I just changed to my new laptop and I think they didn't set up my video or what? Let's make this less awkward. Ah, that's better. For me, before I start coaching, what I've been doing is actually just going for the e-coaching sessions. To me, I think there was like a lot of inputs on stocks opportunities. Then I ended up like buying here and there, a bit, a bit, a bit everywhere. Then after I came to the coaching session, I then I sat with Mingyao right there at the time. He asked me to consolidate everything. I realized that, hey, I got like 20 stocks on my hands. I was like, oh shit, that's like crazy. You sure you got 20 stocks on here? Can you be more exact? Yeah. <laughs> it was more than that. Lah. Then after that, we consolidated a bit more. And then over the few, few weeks, right, I've cut down from like 26 to 10. After that, my current portfolio size is around 8 stocks now. Lah. Seriously, I think I should still continue to attend V coaching. Why? Because of the emotion control part, which helped me a lot every time when I go back. I know that you know the, the trainers always teach about the, the, the numbers, the ROE, the try to say right. But unknowingly, uh, actually the coaches did sometimes uh, say something about the emotion part. Ah, you know when you when you see this number doesn't mean that you know, something to grow something like that. Every session when I attend uh, is totally different. I mean, first thing is to build that circle of competence because through all these uh, sessions, I really get to learn a lot of companies, a lot of industries that I was not familiar nor even oh. heard about them. So with that, then I, I, I really learned a lot from this. At first, right, I wasn't really uh, very confident to do a case studies. I think after I uh, had the coaching session with Minyao, then I realized that actually yeah, it's, it's correct, you know, I should just continue to do the case study like that. So what I stopped doing now is also I don't check the share price uh, that frequently anymore. Last time, right, it's like every day, then like at night, uh, 10 to 11, I'll just sit down there from the screen and then stare, stare at the <laughs> fluctuation. And I think that the, the change is quite drastic in a good way because now I can look at my eight companies, right, and then I feel a sense of peace. Eh? <laughs> When I, look, when I open up my thing and see, right, I feel like, okay, I am in control of what I can do next. What I'm going to share today is about uh, Menu Life with not sure anyone of you have heard or familiar with this read. Hear before. Heard before, okay. Uh, Karen, not only heard before. I heard before, la, then. <laughs> I have this, la, okay, yes, yes. <laughs> This is the REIT that is listed in Singapore. Of all the properties that they have under the, the belt, right, is, uh, is in US. So you can see that across the whole uh, United States, they have nine properties with them. And then they are office REITs. Uh, they have a total of 176 tenants. And uh, you could see that there's this uh, line here that, you know, there are two sets of people that the one who is no strategize managing all these bits, they are all sitting in Singapore. But all the profits, they are in um, in, in US. The reason that I'm highlighting this is for every REIT, they have the REIT manager, they also have their sponsor. So now that we know that they are doing REITs, actually they are also uh, the, the insurance company, they also have their financial institute and um, they have quite a diversified profile and their sponsor is the real estate uh, investment and then the parent company is the financial uh, institute. So you can see their, their back end, their backbone is, is very strong. If you look directly into their sugar daddy, it actually passed all the criteria that uh, that's been set. First of all, the size, it has to be more than 1 billion um, of their market cap which they already exceeded. And then um, gearing ratio, meaning to say their, their asset ratio by Singapore standard, it shall not be more than 45%. But here then, in order to pay a bit of a safety margin, then they put it as less than 40%. Read manager, I'll, I'll touch on that in the next slide. Their DPU, okay, DPU is the distribution per unit. This would actually give you the calculation of how much 
dividend that you'll be receiving based on the share price that you bought. Last year, of course, due to the whole pandemic and slightly decrease, it's actually because also of a lower parking income and also some of the areas are not doing too well in terms of leasing. So that's why it came down slightly, but it's okay for me for time being because DPU, I am still getting my dividend yield of 8%. If you come back, look whether their asset yield and also their cost of debt, whether it's healthy or not. It's just like, you know, you buy a house and then you invest in the property and then you have to loan from the from the bank, right? And then when you rent it out, you have to make sure that somehow your asset yield, that means your rental should be always higher, ideally higher than the loan that you have to pay by installment to the, to the bank. So over here, it's quite healthy. As what I mentioned, they themselves, the real estate management is the manager and that is wholly owned by the sponsor which is the life insurance so i mean to me the definition of for me to say this is like from left to right pocket so it's like one good family and then they have a very strong backup and that also gave me a very strong conviction in order to continue holding them and just want to highlight property it's class a and property only that means they have the best in class office buildings the whole infrastructure and everything so this is also something that is very important in order to have a good read because of this whole working from home and the pandemic so people would be start questioning office read can still buy or not People are not going back to the office. But if you look at this chart, you know, based on the occupancy versus to the market, in fact, they are doing very well, much better than the market for now. To me, what is the most concerning key risk over here is whether the pandemic, how long is going to last and also whether or not people will start thinking like, you know, moving to one city to another, shifting of their uh, offices and even their homes, of course, then um, that is something that is uh, that concerns me. The message that I'm getting from the management is they have plans in mind, they are seeing the recovery and uh, the message to the unit holders is also uh, by one word, patience, because this will definitely take time to recover. So what I'm highlighting here are those management people that has uh, either the REIT management experience and then strong financial experience and also good relationship with the sponsor. Supplements like, so, so far the chairman is holding a bit of the shares. In fact, the trustee of this whole REIT is from BBS. So they've been holding a, a huge stake other than the sponsor themselves. So if you're talking about the management team, if they are holding much of their stocks, um, not so much, unfortunately. Okay, so that's the end of my sharing. Any questions that you all have? Actually, I, I'm, I see the number of employees 17. Is it normal to have 17 employees for this company? I, guess? <laughs> I also. <laughs> because I see the employee 17, I was a bit worried. <laughs> um, you know? well, yes, they mentioned that they have 17 full-time of executive and non-executive position in their company. But I'm also thinking that, you know, maybe they do not need that many employees as well because uh, they don't manage the building. They hire those property management to manage all this stuff. So to how I feel is more of paperwork and more of the strategy work that they have to do. Hmm. Do you know what are their expansion plans for the next uh, one to three years? How they look into the expansion plan is through two directions actually. One of course is from the joint venture and merger and the other one is to have their organic growth. So these are the two plans that they have but they do not specify clearly enough in their uh, annual report to say that you know whichever they want to acquire so they don't have a specific target. Hey, want to get weekly coaching from our experts? If you do, just head over to VApp and join our V Coaching sessions, where our coaches will discuss the latest investment topics and case studies. What's more, you get to share your thoughts with a community of investors. It's simple, just select a plan that best suits your needs and you're all set to grow your investment portfolio. So today, I'll be talking about a company that I'm quite familiar with because I have been monitoring my vendor, what has they been doing which is actually Unity. This is Unity. I think to many of you here, they do 3D, they do uh, gaming, they do animation, all this. But actually, in real fact, uh, they do a lot of other things. They actually have three segments here, create solution, operate solution, and strategic partnership. 
So as I mentioned, Unity is not just into gaming. We are also into AR, VR, and also into industrial beyond gaming. One. So example for my field, uh, actually engineering, they actually they use Unity to, to build uh, 3D images for the product. The creation solution, uh, their revenue is actually to have a platform, okay? Unity Pro, Unity Plus, you know, all the, the program that you buy. Operation solution is actually the one that actually make them the most money. How did they do it? Actually, they provide them solution like cloud-based solution, set up server, and then monetize their solution, help them to advertise their games. These are the components that they help the developer to set up. So the developer don't need to do anything, but they just buy this component and then go off the channel. Already. So this is the part they, they gain not a lot of revenue, but this uh, partnership I find it amazing. It's actually like loyalty. I help you to build a game, I help you to sell, I help you to advertise. When you gain certain revenue, I will charge you a royalty fee. So as you see here, they have different price range. The way they structure themselves is, let's say you are just a beginner, you want to try right, you can always try it free, no problem. Okay. On the other hand, they have this creation solution. One of them is Art Engine. Art Engine is actually to assist the artist to draw something using AI assistant. What do I mean? So they have this workflow called Search, Scan, Paint, Enhance, Expand and Transmute. So I can scan anything, okay? The image will be flat, flat like this, all right? Assuming this is something low, low pixel, okay? The AI uh, is smart enough to add on all the details from 512 to 512 pixel into 2048 pixel until this shape here. Not only that, uh, after you have this shape, right? You can actually bring all this shape and then lay it into whatever shape you want. You can put it in the spear form, a rectangular form, cone form, something like this. I find that this is good enough. But uh, professional artists will think that this is not good enough because it's just like a wrapping paper right around the object. So with the transmute, right, with the AI assist, uh, they couldn't be able to give single little detail, additional more shadow, more light, small details until like this, super 3D. Imagine this is the technology they have. Operation solution now. This is something that is very unique. For example, uh, things like monetize. They actually help you to gain revenue from your games. They also help you do simulation. If after you complete your game already, you need to hire some tester to do simulation, right? they can do for you. And then they can even do multiplayer. So they set up server for you, then your game can hook up to server and you can help host a lot of player. They can even help you to set up chat feature in your game. So they actually know what the game house wants so that they can provide continuous support for their customer. Now for revenue, I see that it's growing. Then I start to look in their report, then they are actually emphasize on customers that have more than 100 revenue over time. So these are actually targeting the big customers. So I can see that the number of customers who generate 100,000 is increasing. Then I compare them with peers. Hey, I'm able to draw this, and I can see that Unity is 11% out of the whole market. Unreal, I would say, is their competitor. Now, this is something I, I want to share. You see these two pictures on top, the top left is a bit blurry, right? The, the, the one on the right is a bit sharp. The one on the bottom, is it? It's the same engine, but is it a bit sharper already? Yeah? More nicer already, behind dark. Lah. Then the one on the right ah, is a bit blah, blah. To review as ah, Unity and Unreal. Ah. If you see the quality, they are there. Ah. So it doesn't mean that Unreal is good. Unity is, is lousy or what, but they can do much better than each other in different areas, I would say. Unreal Engine, they also have their asset. The asset means, uh, you see like this on the top of head, right? You can download and then plug into your program. Then you can have a head ready. Then you can change change the color, change the shape, change whatever pattern you want. So this is like a template for you download. For your info, all these are is uploaded by some creator. So let's say I upload. Someone download, I earn a bit of revenue. Unity earn a bit of revenue. So this one is like asset stock. So as of today, they have collected 10,000 over samples. Then for Unity, the asset store right now they have is actually five times more than Unreal Engine. So that means uh, there are a lot of more developers start to you know, build something and upload it onto the asset for Unity already. So it's like getting popular. Okay, these are the management. I checked the executive here. They are very experienced. They are in gaming sector, they are in 2D sector. So this is John, 2014, he came on board. That's where the revenue should up. I see that he's one of the key factors that bring the growth very super fast. But it's Ingrid that I'm very uh, concerned on because she's the one who is earning the most component the operation solution. Where I see that he used to work online advertising technology and then mobile advertising platform. 
So she is managing exactly what matches in the operation solution. So without her, I don't know who can take over her. So at this point of time, although operation earns the most, I do not know the, the driving factor is from her or from the CEO. All this is VI chart. So VI chart, I see that no, although two star, but there's only one rate. Everything is low. Their profit margin is not there yet because they need to increase personal costs and then also to expand their business. Analyzing a company in detail is no easy feat. Thus, it's great that our Choose Me participants were able to help one another by asking each other questions during the sharing. This provided the presenter with additional insights or things that they could have potentially missed out when doing their initial research. With that, it's two down and two to go. Join us next week where we'll continue with Jiaxuan and Karen's case study sharing. Oh, and did I mention that they're both going to be presenting on the same company? That will definitely be an interesting one, so don't forget to join us next time. Enjoying the series so far? Then drop us a like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to get updated when our next episode is released.